Okay, so I want to shoot film and I want to use OM Log 400, okay? So the OMD EM1 Mark II, uh, it's actually quite a good film camera apparently, but it only does 8 bit. But I mean, 8 bit, 10 bit, I think. 10 bit might be a little bit too much uh, overkill for what I need. 8 bit's good enough, and I saw a few videos saying 8 bit's okay if you, you know, you can live with it. Uh, how, I mean, seriously, how much do you really need to uh, color grade and get back the depth, uh, get back your um, exposure? Hey Jerry. So what I'm going to do then? I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot OM Log 400, and I found that if you Now I'm assuming the OM log, the 400 in the name, <laughs> must mean that it only goes down to ISO 400 because I was racking my brain going, what the hell man, um, it doesn't want to go down from 400, I wanted to get ISO 200 because that will give me you know, less grain obviously, but it doesn't go, it only goes to OM, uh, sorry it only goes to ISO 400. Put it in movie mode. And then I've got to put it in uh, manual, shoot manual in movie mode, and set the ISO to 400. Uh, cinema 4K, which is 24 frames per second, and that's going to give you that kind of um, cinema border because it's a, it's wider. And what else, Jerry? And the shutter speed has to be 48 speed. Now the beauty of this camera is it lets you choose 48 speed the shutter speed and that'll give you your 180 degree rule whatever which is double the shut double the frame rate so if you're shooting 24 frames per second then double that and that's 48 1 over 48 speed obviously if you're, 30, if you're shooting 30 frames per second then it's 1 over 60 now that's all good and everything but what happens is it just gets too bright because you're opening the shutter speed you're lowering the shutter speed so low hey Jerry that um, you're just getting too much light in and no matter how much you stop it down or you actually you don't want to stop it down because you want to get like depth of field bokeh whatever so you set, you want to get your aperture as low as possible ND filters they have to come into play and a variable ND filter as well if you, if you notice you see there I'm ND variabling the darkness of it like that. Now what you've got to do is tweak that so you get the perfect exposure. And the only way to test for that is to, you can go, go into the ISO mode and you can see how many stops in that. But for some reason when I, when I do that it underexposes it by two stops. Well it, well, it says it's exposed, but then on the screen, because this is mirrorless, it just looks really dark. I don't understand it. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking at the histogram and I'm just putting it nice and even in, in the middle of the histogram. Uh, I mean, they think they say expose a little bit more to the right than the left, but if I just put the histogram right in the middle, it should be all right your ISO there. Now if I turn the ND filter, the variable ND filter, it goes like that. So you just look at the histogram and that's your best bet. That's the flat profile. Okay, with flat profile you can go down to ISO 200. That's another profile that people can use. Hey Jerry, huh? You listening? Hmm? You tired? So yeah, flat profile is another profile, uh, another codec, whatever that you can use. Uh, a lot of people use flat profile because it's easier to process. 
Okay, so I've come to the zoo. I've just put it into flat profile. I'm on ISO 200. I'm at 48, 1 over 48 speed. And uh, at F4. And I'm at 24 frames per second. So I've got the ND filter on. I'm at 14 millimeters. So this is flat profile. Jerry, I've got a feeling I should trust the, exp um, what do you call it? This thing here, the um, histogram. Adjust the variable ND filter so you get that histogram right in the middle there. Uh, preferably a little bit to the right although OM log is saying to me go to the left <laughs> anyway uh, that's why I shoot program mode <laughs> so I want to experiment just a little bit with and see what I mean it's got it's a good video camera uh, and you can make um, films with it you can even put like uh, old school LUTs on there that like um, even that dehancer has it with uh, DaVinci Resolve and you can chuck on uh, old school film uh, looks on top of your uh, video. Oh, look at this guy. Yeah, I like when he looks down. He looks like that, uh, looks like something from the TV. The EM1 Mark II, it's a really good video camera, even though it's 8 bit. The OM log and the flat profile, so you can grab more. A dynamic range out of it in post when you're color grading or you know highlight uh, highlights and shadows because up until now all my videos I just chuck it in program mode and just click and let it let it decide itself it's good enough for YouTube anyway but you know if you want to make it like a little short video or a short film or something it's always good to get that cinematic there I said it cinematic look <laughs> Jerry cinematic look Am I crazy or what? Huh? Is that being oversaid or what? Cinematic look? I've got this thing here. Like that. I'm gonna put a little, which way does it go? Like that. And it's like a little grip thing. And just start filming uh, at the zoo and see if I can maybe shoot flat profile and OM log just keeping my eye on that histogram. Also, when you zoom in, your aperture changes, obviously. Keep your eye on the histogram. Hey, mate, you understand? You're too busy eating. Not happy with this uh, continuous autofocus. That's why they reckon in film, they have focus pullers. They always, manual focus is the way to go. because uh, hunting when you're continuously auto focusing and it's hunting it's very unprofessional <laughs> if you're making a movie anyway it's all happening here at the zoo it acts as a natural insect repellent uh, eating it. he's eating it there's lots of nutrients and vitamins in mud
Okay, so that's it. Uh, this is flat or OM log, can't remember. <laughs> but that's me um, trying out this movie settings in the, uh, in the old OMD EM1 Mark II. It's an old camera now. It's, uh, you're looking at, I don't know, you probably get it around second hand. You could pick one up for about 800 bucks with a lens even. Probably not a good lens, but like the professional. Where the hell's my car? But um, yeah, for a good cinematic, there I go, I'm saying that word again, uh, camera that does everything, even though it's 8 bit, but I don't even know 8 bit, 10 bit, I wouldn't even know the difference. Uh, I guess that's more for professionals. So one day maybe I'll become a professional at this and figure out what the hell 8 bit and 10 bit is. Where the hell is my car? And uh, yeah, so, but for, you know, a good budget entry level uh, professional camera from about six years ago, why not? <laughs> it's, uh, it, you're looking at, um, you know, just got to buy all the rigs around it, you know, the cage and the lights and all that, and the sound. So bloody windy. Now I really am lost. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll, um, I'll do the post editing and see how that turns out. There it is. And I'll do like DaVinci Resolve, I'll do it in Vegas. I'll load all the LUTs and the whatever and see how it turns out. Well, I'll catch you later.